And I'm very excited uh, to have with us, um, well, I mean, really an icon of hip-hop uh, and rap. Uh, and we're very, very uh, excited uh, to have uh, Prodigy uh, Mob Deep on with us. He's a Grammy Award-winning rapper and one half of the hip-hop duo Mob Deep. Uh, he recently served a three-year sentence over oh, the evil Second Amendment. That's right. Uh, boy, I tell you, they went after him when he started exposing the Illuminati. And he was recently featured in the 2011 uh, documentary Rhyme and Punishment, a film that documents hip-hop artists who've been incarcerated. Uh, he is the great-great-grandson of uh, founder of Morehouse College and a new book, My Infamous Life, The Autobiography of Mob Deep's Prodigy. I don't know how long we've got it because we got time zones scrambled. We're about to go to break. Uh, but I've got so many questions for you, sir, and we appreciate you joining us today. Not a problem, Alex, man. I'm a big fan. Well, we're, we're a fan of your work. A lot of people constantly ask me, and we're going to go to break here in a minute, about Illuminati, Illuminati. They see Jay-Z, all these rappers doing you know, all these weird Illuminati symbols and things like that. I know folks are going to pause that now and say, I was making those. I'm making those to show people. Um, that's how they do that online. But the point is, you've exposed them. Uh, bottom line, what's your take on that? I mean, to me, you know, uh, it's definitely it's definitely not a joke, man. There's it, it, a lot of real stuff going on out here in this in this world. It, secret societies are real, you know. Um, it's definitely very obvious, you know, that um, they're at work and it's, it's at play in, in the music industry, in the food industry, politics. Everywhere you turn is everywhere. Um, you just got to read the signs, you know what I mean? The writing on the wall, basically, is all in front of your face, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, once people just learn about it and do a little research about it all, they'll be able to see, like, oh, wow, this, yeah, I understand what's going on, you know what I mean? Absolutely. You've got the floor. Lay it out. Break it down. I mean, this, this reported letter... Uh, when you were set up and sent to prison for exercising your Second Amendment rights, I mean, did you write this letter? And because it's very poignant, and uh, you know, I agree with much of it. So, uh, you got the floor. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wrote a lot of letters while I was in there, man. Um, I was doing this thing for Vibe Magazine, you know, um, just writing letters from from prison, just expressing myself and and, and things I wanted to get off my chest things that were on my mind and I wanted to let people know. And I wanted to show them, even though I was inside, you know, locked in a prison, you know, I wanted to show them that I still had no fear in my heart, you know, about speaking my mind and letting people know what time it is. It was, there's no reason for me to fear because it's really nothing, there's nothing they can do besides kill me. And, and I'm not afraid of that, you know what I mean? Like, um, I, don't, I don't think... Right now, they they at the point where they would take it that far. I think they like this plan that they got into effect, and it's been in effect for hundreds of years or whatever. I think it's so embedded in people's brains now. They got people so brainwashed in this world that they don't even really care anymore. You know what I mean? About people like Alex Jones, people like Prodigy. Like they're like, go ahead and tell the people all you want. We got we got these people so brainwashed. There's nothing you guys can do about it. That's how they feel, you know what I'm saying? And when I say they, I mean, you know, the power and the structures that's in place, you know, that's, that's there to control us, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, looking at it, well, well it's, it's twofold. 30, 40 years ago, if you talked about this, they would give you a fast-acting cancer. They would kill you. It's on record. Much of it's been declassified. But people still had courage and got the word out. And so because so many people spoke out, they've now flipped it and said, okay, we're growing the opium in Afghanistan. Okay, we're shipping the cocaine in. Okay, we're shipping the guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment. And so they've decided to just, to, to just go with the revelation of the method instead because they're desperate. But if we really try to shake people out of their trance, as you and others are doing across the board, they we can beat them if we can get people out of the trance they're in. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I, I always say like, God always wins at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Uh, good always gonna be evil at the end of the day, man. No matter how bad it's looking, you know what I mean? No matter what's going on, you know what I mean? Um, good is always going to win. You know what I mean? Um, but right now, you know what I mean? The devil definitely got the world in the headlock. You know what I mean? It, it's crazy. It's definitely crazy. And it's at the point.
point where they got it they got it so far, like I said, they don't even care. They'll put it they put it all in our face. You know what I mean? The information it's the information age. It's everywhere, it's all over the internet, what's going on, you know, it's all in these books, it's in movies, it's in you know, it's all over the place. And they got people so brainwashed, you know what I mean, with 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 all the uh you know, fashion and, you know, jewelry, especially like in the in the hip hop world, you know, in the hip hop community and the urban communities with well where I can where I come from, you know what I mean? They got us so brainwashed with with with, with fashion, jewelry and like and sex and, and all this stuff. We like we don't even care to even think about what's going on. You know what I mean? Like it, a lot of a lot of the people that I'm around like, I look at them sometimes, and only concern about is what I just said, like the fashion, the jewelry, the sex, all the stuff that is materialistic and stuff that, like, is not going to do nothing for their soul or their life. Well, you've had it all, and, and, you know, it's not like I've had it all, but, I mean, I've had a lot of success, gotten to meet most of, I mean, most of the famous people in Hollywood at one time or another, and once you meet them and find out that it's nothing, it's not fulfilling. What What is fulfilling is having truth and information and decency and honor. And uh, but, but for folks that have never really had some form of notoriety or fame, which you've had much greater than I have, they can't understand it. They're, they're always scrambling for it, reaching for it. Uh, do you agree with that statement? And, and what can you say to young people and others that feel unfulfilled because they're not somebody making $10 million a year like a top rap star? Man, I would say it's not all about that, man. Life, life is not about, um, you know, that chasing, chasing that dream. Life, life is about, you know, what I mean, being happy. You know, what I mean, it's about, it's about having, a, you know, a pure heart, pure soul, eating good, family. You know, what I mean, yes. uh, love. You know, what I'm saying, like your relationship with your spouse or whatever. Um, you know, that, these are the things that life is about, raising your children properly, making sure that, you know, each generation gets better than the last one, you know, smarter and healthier than the last one, all of that. These are the things that life is about. It's not really about chasing all these crazy dreams, you know what I mean? Because, you know, even though people want, you know, it's, people want success, you know, every, every anybody wants to be successful, you know what I mean, in life and, and have some decent money where you could be comfortable and things like that. But, you know, some people really just take it too far and they get caught up in that whole money and success thing, you know what I mean? Yes, I think it's a, well, it's a, it's a hierarchy of needs. Success is great as long as you don't compromise to get it and as long as the success itself isn't the goal. Success in doing good, success in beautiful art, success in developing things, that's wonderful. The globalists, the controllers create a false success and set up false icons for us so that we'll chase, basically it's false idols. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. That's, that's exactly what it is, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, man, it, it, it's bad, man, it's bad, because, you know, I, look, I, I try to reach out and, you know, share the information that I know with a lot of people, you know what I mean? Just yes. read stuff that I've read over the years and, and learned about what's really going on, you know, with this government and what's really going on, you know, in this world and everything and how we should really be living and taking care of our families and our life. And I try to share a lot of the information with you know, my friends, my peers, or whatever that I grew up with, or that I, I that I'm around a lot, and um, I had I had to learn the hard way that you know you you can't just just push information on people. You know what I mean? You gotta they gotta want to know it. You know what I mean? They gotta want to change their life. They've got to open the door. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And um. It's sad that it's like that, but really that's how it is, man. You know, um, I know a lot of people now that I see, they're like, yo, yo, prodigy, man, you, what, what can I do? Like, I was getting a lot of letters while I was in, I was in prison, right? And people would write me and say, yo, prodigy, what can I do, man? I'm trying to share information with my homeboys and my friends, and they're not listening, they don't care, da, da, da. And I would write them back, like, listen, they got to want their information, man. You, you know, they got to want that change in their life, man. You can't just make people, you know what I mean, change. That's, that's something that, 
that's a phenomenon that has to happen on his own. You know what I mean? I'll tell you what, Prodigy, stay with us. We've got to go to break for just a moment. Prodigy of Mob Deep is our guest. Prodigy we'll right of now. Mob Deep, legendary uh, icon of hip hop and rap, is our guest, really exposing the Illuminati program. And we were getting into. Uh, you know, uh, folks, you know, coming to him and saying we're trying to wake up, you know, folks, and they're not listening. It's because they're following a false mirage, a, a false culture sold to them by the social engineers. Uh, but the good news is we're beginning to break through. And one of the most common questions I get is, get Prodigy on. You know, he's talking about stuff you're talking about. So here he is, sir. And uh, you got cut off by the break. This is a short segment. You were talking about people have to want it. And then let's get into your view on the Illuminati and who's running this system. Yeah, so, you know, um, like I was saying, you know, it, it, it's hard to, to get people to listen and to get people to want to change. They got to want that change on their own. That, that'll never happen. You can't force somebody to want to change their life and change their way of thinking to understand what's really going on, that they've been manipulated. Their parents and their grandparents have been manipulated. You know, it's hard to break somebody out of that spell, you know, and, and that way of thinking and that, and, that, uh, and that belief system. You know what I mean? Because yes. they're, in, they're in a comfortable space where, you know, that's, it, it just shatters their whole entire world, like, and their way of thinking. It, just, it, it hurts too much. It's way too, more, it's way too comfortable for them to just stay the way they are. You know what I mean? Well, it's like Neo in The Matrix uh, when Morpheus gives him the red pill, and he goes, look, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing else. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it, it, that's, that's a difficult thing, you know, and I find that real challenging, you know what I mean, growing up and, and uh, you know, dealing with the environment that I come from, you know, that street world where, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of knuckleheads, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's real difficult to reach them, you know what I mean? So... Yeah, I had to learn the hard way that, you know, I could I just sit back and uh, the people that are around me that notice how, what I'm all about and the things that I learn and, you know, the things that I put in my music a lot and uh, those that want that change in their life, they'll come to me. I don't even have to find them. You know what I mean? How, how did you begin to awaken? I mean, it was, it was about 19... 89, you know, I went to high school in Manhattan. I went to Art and Design, where I met my, my music partner, Havoc, you know what I mean? Um, and back then, they used to have these um, these tables out in the street on, on, on random corners in, like, Queens and Manhattan, Bronx and Brooklyn, all the five boroughs or whatever. And they used to have these tables, and it was, like, Muslim guys selling books, you know what I mean? And it, or, or, or they looked like they were Muslim to me, you know what I mean? Because they had on the garb, the hats, and, and uh, you know, the, the whole the whole get-up or whatever. So I used to stop at the tables, and I used to buy this coconut oil. Cause it smell, I like how it smell, you know what I mean? Yes. So, um, Stay there. Let's come back. Uh, we've got Prodigy of Mob Deep uh, on with us right now. Long segment coming up, and also... Uh, Prodigy, when we come back, let's plug all your websites and things. There's so many of them. I want to make sure I get the right ones out, so we'll drop those on people. Uh, on the other back side, to I'm Alex Prodigy of Mob Deep, a legendary uh, Grammy Award winning rapper uh, who goes right back to the start of all the big superstars we have today. He was getting into uh, his awakening. Uh, and he started to, uh, you, you, uh, you'd gotten to the point of talking to folks selling books on the street. Please continue. Yeah, so. Um there was this guy named Dr. York. You know, he had he had a, a community in Brooklyn called the Ansar Law Community. And um, basically he had his people out in the street selling books and the Muslim oils and different things like that, like incense and stuff like that. So I used to stop at the table to pick up this coconut oil because I liked how it smelled, you know, because the girls liked it. So at the table, they would sell these books written by Dr. York. You know what I mean? And it was a book. They were, the first books that I've read were books on, like, the, um, the holidays. One book was about Christmas. One was about Easter. And, and, and it showed, like, the origin of these uh, pagan, you know, evil holidays. So I picked it up, 
And I was like, what the hell is this? Because they had one, the Christmas book had the uh, Santa Claus looking like Satan on the cover. I mean, it was just like strange. I never saw nothing like that before. You know, I was only like 16. So I picked up the book and I started getting into it. And I started learning who Dr. York is and what he's about and the stuff that he teaches. And then I started reading a lot of his books. And uh, I realized that, you know, this dude was basically uh, teaching, you know, people, especially black people, you know, about our origin and where we come from and how we, you know, we, we have a, a, a great history in this world and how we were, like, basically uh, brainwashed, you know, and soul washed of all of our history and of who we are and everything. Well, that's know? right. If you go back to Roman times, no one looked at and said black men uh, were inferior. Uh, I mean, that wasn't even, you know, debated or or discussed. And, 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 and you can lay out your historical review. But what really, from my research, you go back 500 years ago, they wanted to start this transatlantic slave trade and they had indentured servants who were white in Europe but they said hey we can use Bible passages and distort them dealing with Ham and Cain and Abel and say that these people deserve to be slaves and it actually took some selling but because the sailors themselves from Europe were mainly pressed and slaves on the ships uh, if you actually research it, uh, I mean, most of them were captured and put on the, uh, the the ships to run them. That's why there were so many people breaking off and becoming pirates. Uh, that then they sold that idea, and that really is an idea that didn't exist till what 500 years ago. Yeah, exactly. You know, they 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 flipped it in a lot of the, the, the Bible, so-called um, Bible stories and all that, or whatever. So, you know, Dr. York was just putting it out there. You know what I mean? And really you know, exposing it to the world, you know, and, and sharing the information with everybody and accepting everybody also. You know, no matter what color you are, no matter what race you are, he was teaching that this is information that needs to be, you know, this, that, that that needs to be put out there, needs to be learned, that can help sure. save your When soul. did you start learning about the Illuminati? Because you told me you've seen the Obama deception, you know, the, the radio show. Uh, uh, you, uh, I said, well, what's your favorite clip? And you said the Bohemian Grove, the... The David Gergen situation. Yeah, yeah, I mean, through his books, you know, through Doc books, that's how I learned about it. That's how I bumped into it because you know it all coincides with each other. You know, what I mean, once you start learning the origin of things and you start learning, uh, you know, the background of things, or what's going on, you're gonna stumble on this word Illuminati, and you're gonna stumble on. You know the the whole diabolical plan and 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 the whole grand scheme of things of what's happening. You know what I mean? So that's how I bumped into it. And then you know later on years down the line, you know I started doing research to make. I'm like, is this man? I'm like, is this is too unbelievable? The information that I was learning was like too incredible. You know what I mean? So it forces you to do your own research. It forces you like back then. It wasn't no internet when I was growing up, you know what I mean? So I had to go to the library, you know what I mean, and check books out. That's what I did, the exact same thing. So you, you've you been awake for close to 30 years. Yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been learning ever since I was like 16. I've been learning, doing research. So, you know, I'm 36 now, you know what I mean? So that's about, yeah, 20 years, you know what I mean? I've been really doing my research, you know what I mean, and, and um, studying this whole thing. You know, so I started in the libraries, finding old books and just, pa like, uh, passing around information. I used to get passed around the street, like, uh, different VHS videotapes that uh, a lot of a lot of the people that I knew in the street life, like, a lot of my criminal friends, uh, you know, they, they weren't all just, uh, you know, just dumb criminals running around. A lot of them were very intelligent. You know what I mean? A lot of them. Well, that's the economy, like they say in The Godfather, that for 100 years they've been shipping the illegal contraband into those black neighborhoods to make that the zone where it was acceptable. So people say, oh, look, these people are criminals. Well, the point is that's that's the the economy that was set up there by the system. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And it's, and it's, a, um, you know, it's a stereotypical thing that people look at us like, oh, whatever, he's just a, or whatever, you know what I mean? But anyway. A lot of my friends, you know what I mean, we would pass around information to each other, videotapes of like uh, uh, the Lum um, I think it was called the Illuminati 2000. Uh, it, was, it was this crazy show 
Now we used to watch, and they had, uh, I forget the guy's names on there. I don't know. Anthony um, Hilder? Yeah, exactly. Anthony Hilder and the other guy with the glasses. Uh, Chad Gunderson, he, uh, Chad Gunderson, he just died over the weekend. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, well uh, Jordan Maxwell. Oh, yeah. The they used to be on those tapes a lot with uh, Anthony Hilder, Hilder. So we used to watch those. We used to pass them around. And this is how we got more into it. We like, damn, I started seeing these tapes. I'm like, hold up. This is the same thing that Dr. York was talking about. So I started, the dots started connecting. You know what I mean? Then I, when the internet came around, I would, I would uh, you know, research all the things that I was learning from, from Hilda, Maxwell, York, and from everybody. And then I bumped into you, your information. You know, Alex Jones. And I'm like, well, wow, everybody is saying the same thing. You know what I mean? It got to be real. You know what I mean? And we'll look at Skull and Bones. ABC got footage. They're worshiping Satan, doing mock human sacrifices. Then I go into Bohemian Grove. Here are the Christian conservative leaders and corporate leaders worshiping a big stone owl and, and, and bringing male prostitutes in. And people are like, oh, let them have fun. The point is they're not who they say they are out in the public. Yeah, they're doing all this ritualistic murder and, and, and rituals on little, you know, they, they, they doing, they molesting little kids, doing sex, um, satanic sex rituals. Like this stuff is really going on in this world. Like, you know what I mean? You got, you got, you know, sick people like Jeffrey Dahmer and, and different people like that. And I, I believe that it was, so, it was a different background to it, of why he was doing what he was doing. I think it was some ritualistic things going on. Absolutely. You know I mean? They set him and up as that. one of their little ghouls. They always have their, their Renfields or their Igors, uh, who, who, who are their minion servants. Then they, I mean, look, it's now come out in the Chicago Tribune that Halliburton and DynCorp run giant child kidnapping rings. Guess who runs most of the private CPS grabbing? DynCorp. And then they get right. caught in Europe and Asia running little kidnapping rings. Well, they just do it out in the open here and take your kids, and, and then you don't know where they go. I mean, it, it came out in CNN in Florida five years ago. Thousands of children missing, and they found a bunch of them dead. Nobody gets in trouble, just like they're dealing the drugs. I want to talk about that with Prodigy Mob Deep on the other side of this break. We'll give you his websites, tell you about his new book as well. Segment. In our final segment with Prodigy of Mob Deep, we're going to get him back up in the near future and play some clips from the audio book uh, of his new book that's available also in uh, book form, My Infamous Life, the Autobiography of Mob Deep's Prodigy, available Amazon everywhere else, a Grammy Award winning uh, rapper. I'm not going to get into all the lore but uh, if I don't get into this with you, people are going to get mad, Prodigy. Obviously okay. out there, uh, constantly, you know, you've been talking about the different icon rappers that are making hundreds of millions of bucks, that many of which you, you know, came up with and knew, who are just constantly selling the establishment view of the world, nothing but materialism, and constantly showing Illuminati symbolism. Uh, I mean, can you talk about why you think they're doing this? Uh, are they trying to brag that they're with the Illuminati? Do they want to get into the Illuminati? Are they part of the Illuminati? And uh, uh, why are you angry about this? I mean, it got to a point in my life where I had to step back and look at my own self. You know what I mean? I had to look myself in the mirror like, like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Um, I was promoting a lot of the wrong things, you know. And at the same time, I was putting the information that I was learning through all these books, you know what I mean, from you, from, you know, Hilda, from York, and from everybody that I was learning from, I was putting the information in my music, you know what I mean? I was, I was like mixing the medicine with the food, you know what I mean? So, so they wouldn't be able to really taste it, but it was in there, you know what I mean? No, I got it. You were going with the bling and, and you know, some of the nomenclature, but it was so, uh, basically, uh, people would come check out the real message. Exactly. You know what I mean? I had to I had to mix it in there somehow to get people's to spark people's curiosity. Like, hold up, Prodigy talking about partying and this and that, but hold up, what's he talking about right here? What does this mean? To spark their interest. I was trying to be strategic about it almost. You know what I mean? To spark people's interest and in what else I had to say. You know what I mean? And um you know, I got to a point in my life and my career where you know, it's easy to get caught up in that lifestyle. You know what I mean? You know, fast money and all that type of stuff. To, you know, 
the, the sex, drugs, and rock and roll, quote unquote. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, I, I had started slipping at some point, and I had to catch myself. You know what I mean? And look myself in the mirror like your dogs. What are you doing? You know what I mean? Like you really bugging right now. Now it's time to go all the way. You know what I mean? Because you're bugging. You know what I mean? So I had to catch myself, and I got to the point where I just got fed up, and I got pissed off, and I said, you know what? I'm not rocking jewelry no more. Number one, I'm not. I'm not doing certain things anymore, and I'm doing it to make a statement. You know what I mean? To let people say, well, why is P doing that? Let's let's listen to what he what he has to say. You know what I mean? And um, basically, I started, you know, looking at the other people in the industry, and I just started picking out certain things that I've seen. Like, why is this person doing this? You know, uh, Jay Z was just one example of, and one of the biggest examples of, uh, you know, artists in the music industry. You know what I mean? Because he's so popular, so big. You know. Um, and uh, the community where he comes from out there in Brooklyn, this is where, you know, the guy Dr. York is also from. And Jay-Z was part of that community, the Dr. York community, you know what I mean? And he, he had learned all that information that York was putting out and all the information that I know, you know what I mean? Jay-Z was learning that also. So he knows what time it is, you know what I mean? But he just doesn't promote it. You're no, saying I mean, bottom line, in a way, he's a turncoat. You know he knows all this information, but he's clearly decided to join it. He's decided to, hey, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Benedict Arnold this. Yeah, I mean, from the looks of things, it looks like, uh, you know, that he has chosen sides. You know what I mean? Um, for lack of a better term, he, he's chosen a side. You know what I mean? And the side that he chose is money, power, and, uh, you know, he doesn't really care to spread any type of information that might help save somebody's soul. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Uh, Prodigy, well, this is a short segment, long final segment coming up. We'll give your websites out on the other side. Prodigy of Mob Deep, I want to come back where we left off. This is powerful information, and I've got a message to JC and others on the other side. I'll see if uh, Prodigy will uh, join me in this message. We'll be right back. Stay fast, uh, sir. Uh, we've seen uh, rappers in the media demonized uh, lately, uh, and, and you were one of the only people to actually come to their defense for calling out Obama. What's your view uh, of uh, President uh, Barack Obama? I mean, my view on him is that, you know, number one, you can't be a president of the United States unless you're part of this bloodline that they got going on that goes all the way back to, uh, you know what I mean, uh, European uh, royalty, you know what I mean? Who believe um, that they're related to, to Jesus and Mary Magdalene. They're completely delusional. Yeah, exactly, you know what I mean? So they got this bloodline going on, and whether people believe it or not, it's very real. You know, you will not be an American president unless you are linked and part of this bloodline, and Obama is. You know, he's a part of that. That's why he was allowed in the, into the door. That's why he was placed where he's at now. Well, he's related you know to Cheney I mean? and Bush. Yeah. You and know. by the way, they're all related to everybody else. That's been confirmed. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely linked. I, I heard a lot of people say, oh, well, all humans are related. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, uh, you know, first, third, fourth, fifth cousins. Like, I'm talking about very related. Like, this is your family. You know what I mean? Your mother is uh, this person's cousin. And, like, I'm talking about real relationships. Yeah, they would come to the family reunion that closely related. Well, it turns yeah. out that the that Bush and Kerry, particularly, even MSNBC did a breakdown. It's like I got a French bulldog. It's super related to all the French bulldogs. I mean, it turns out they're cousins on every side in every angle. Third cousins, fifth, ninth, tenth, fifteenth. I mean, it's just all related. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, Obama's a part of that. And um, whether he knows it or not, you know what I mean? Because I don't know that man. I haven't got a chance to pick his brain. So I don't know, really. I can only assume and I can only look at the facts. You know what I mean? And um, from what I see, you know what I mean? Whether he knows it or not, you know, he's down with this whole, uh, you know, conspiracy, you know what I mean, to, to rule the world, basically. He's a part of it. You know what I mean? And... Um, you know to brainwash people and and to ha and to kill people, genocide. You know what I mean. Everything that's going on out here that you that is just so fantastic, you really don't want to believe it. You know Obama's down with it. 
Well, know, Prodigy, I mean, what about the fact that he increased the funding for the basically uh, forced abortions and, and, and population reduction in Africa? I mean, that's the big litmus test for me, any leader, because it doesn't matter if you're white, black, you know, when people are, when 52% when of black people in America are never born, I mean, that is definitely being targeted. And Jesse Jackson talked about this until he ran for president and then suddenly shut up. For me, that's the litmus test. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff like that going on, man. There's definitely a lot of stuff like that going on. And, you know, it's sad, man. It's sad that, uh, you know, when when, people, when when the election time was going on, when, you know, Obama was running for president, uh, I was looking at all the candidates. And, you know, I'm like, wow, this is really a black candidate like you know what I mean? it was amazing to watch that you know what i mean because you know i'm i'm black i'm proud of my heritage and it would be nice to see that you know what i mean that would be a beautiful thing so i'm looking at everybody though and i'm watching the uh you know the debates with the candidates when they debate each other and all that and um i'm really watching it close i'm paying attention to what they're saying and what they represent and i seen to do ron paul and the things certain things he was saying you know what i mean and i was like hold up Ron Paul is the only one up there, like, really exposing people. Like, he's really saying something. Nobody else is saying nothing like him. You know what I mean? And the whole media came after him. Uh, one of my staff got a, a, a professional poll call the other day, and it was, it, was, it was computerized. And they had the Republican candidates one through seven with Ron Paul at the end. He tried to vote for Ron Paul, and it wouldn't let him vote. And they've caught Fox News dubbing in booze over him when he wins the big straw polls. Absolutely. They, I mean, that's where you can tell. If the media is behind somebody, then you know they're bad. If the media is against somebody, you know they're good. Exactly. You know what I mean? So I had put it out there. I started doing interviews. They were like, yo, Prodigy, who you vote? You're voting for Obama? Because it was a popular thing in the rap community. So, oh, vote for Obama, the first black president. He'll be the first black. You know, that was real popular, and a lot of people just follow like sheep. You know what I'm saying? So they asked me on the radio, oh, would you vote? who are you voting for? I said, if I was the vote, I would vote for Ron Paul. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they were like, what? They couldn't believe I said that. You know what I mean? Like, everybody in the hip-hop community, they were just like, oh, Prodigy, you crazy. The first black president, he's black. Vote for him because he's black. I'm like, you don't vote for a person because he's black, first of all. You know what I mean? You vote for a person, no, no, no matter what their color is, you vote for them because of their intelligence and what they say they're going to do and, you know, what they are doing. And, and You know what I mean? Exactly. You don't, you don't judge somebody by the color of their skin, but by the character of their deeds. Exactly. You know what I mean? So this is what I was promoting to people, and they tried to, like, almost demonize me or, or like, like say, oh, Prodigy's crazy. What's wrong with this guy? He's just, oh, he's just ranting, and he doesn't know what he's talking about. You know what I mean? He, he's a conspiracy theorist, and he does this, and he does that. I'm like, wow, there's that many crazy people in this world. For well, hey, look who's been proven right. Continued the wars, the torture, the spying, the banker behavior. I mean, it's like Bush 3 here, or I guess Bush was really part 3 of his dad, so I guess it'd be part 4, 5, Bush 5 here. Because we all know that when Reagan was running things, that it was really uh, uh, Bush Sr. Talk about a wicked, wicked uh, devil uh, on that front. Running through a bunch of questions here, and, and, and I'm glad Ron Paul was on my uh, list here. Uh, let's talk a little bit uh, about 9-11. Uh, What's your view on 9-11? 9-11 was basically um, a setup, you know what I mean, by the, uh, definitely by, you know, this thing called the Illuminati. You know what I mean? That's another thing I want to touch on real quick. Um, Illuminati is just a word, first of all. You know what I mean? It means um, to be enlightened, you know, the illuminated ones or whatever, whatever, right? Um, you know, the original uh, Illuminati, that, that original concept, you know what I mean? It comes from, you know, the the, um, the essence in Egypt, in ancient Egypt, you know what I mean? The, the original Masons, you know what I mean? The Egyptian mystery schools. Exactly. It comes from us. And they took our information, basically, and they're using it for evil. You know what I mean? So this, I just want to let people know the origin of this stuff. Like, they're taking our history, our, you know what I mean, my, my ancestors' history, knowledge, information, and they're using that power, which is God's power, and they're using it for evil. You know well, it I mean? is true that Egypt uh, 
6,000 years ago or more was the first with the, to set up colleges on, ast on astronomy, but also uh, farming, but also political control. Uh, and uh, and then, of course, that's why we're buried in coffins. I mean, it's all Egyptology. And then that's what the Masons are, you know, or, or think they're hoarding the secrets of it. And then you have re really the Illuminati being a modern branch of that. And really, it's a gang of people. Uh, and, of course, most Masons or porch Masons aren't even aware of it. And it's an idea. They can right. see we can. It's like they live. John Carpenter. You know, exactly. Uh, uh, exactly. Uh, uh, they live, we sleep, and you put the sunglasses on, and now you can see. And, and exactly. what do they say when you can see? I got one that can see. Exactly. You know what I mean? So the, the, that, that word is just, it's just a word. It's a concept, like you said, for a group of people that are running things. That's probably not even their name. Alex, you know what I'm saying? They probably go by a different name. They probably have no name, but who cares? The well, let me give you their line. name. They call it the Council, the Supreme Council of 13 uh, that sits above the Bilderberg Group. I've confirmed this by m multiple high-level CIA and State Department people and Colonel Craig Roberts and others. I would never even say it till I'd gotten it confirmed over and over again. You notice the new Super Congress is a model of that or a subgroup as above below in their rules, you have six House, six Senate, and Obama as the head of the Council of 13. Again, Jesus and his 12 disciples, uh, the 13 colonies, they always repeat it over and over again. Yeah, yeah you know what I mean? But the bottom line is it's happening. It doesn't even matter what their name is. You know what I mean? It could be the, 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 the round table of grand wizards, dummy, dumbasses. Like, who cares what their name is? It's really happening, you know what I'm saying? So... The bottom line is on 9-11, you know what I mean, they, what they did was they killed 20 birds with one stone. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's how I like to say it. You know what I mean? Because they changed all kinds of laws. They changed um, all kinds of, uh, of uh, they changed people's mentality, the way they look at the world. They, 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 they pulled off one of the biggest ritualistic murders, you know what I mean, um, that, that 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 ever happened, you know what I mean, live for the whole world to see, you know what I mean. Um, I put a line in my, on one of my songs that you were just playing in, in, in the intro about how they lit the pentagram on fire, you know, in the Pentagon. That's a pentagram they set fire that day. It's you the center I mean? of the Pentagon uh, of a pentagram, yeah. Yeah, so it was on fire, like, and they only do that in satanic rituals. They like pentagrams on fire. You know what I mean? So I think it was more than just, oh, uh, something hit the building or whatever. I think they really lit it on fire for a reason. You know what I mean? Oh, they admit that wars are ritualistic slaughter. That goes back to the Romans with the gladiators. It began as a sacrifice, but instead of the, the priest cutting your heart out, we had people kill each other uh, in the ring, uh, and the ancient Greeks had human sacrifice. Um, uh, this stuff does not does not change, and for the outer initiates at Bohemian Grove, it's mock, but then for the inner initiates, uh, it becomes real, and then once they've compromised you there, now you can engage in the mass murder and death openly. Now, I've read, and I want to see if this is accurate, that obviously you have a right to defend yourself, a famous, wealthy person. I mean, guys that, you know, care, you know, that close donut shops at, or, you know, at, at midnight are, you know, allowed to carry guns even in cities that have restrictions. And, and I've read that you got set up for having a gun to defend yourself, a multimillionaire, you know, probably 50 times over, I don't know. And that, and that, and that again, in New York, you're not allowed to defend yourself and that that's what they sent you to prison for and that that was basically done to punish you because of what you were saying. Well, that might be a little... Um, extreme to say that, you know what I mean? Um, people might have the wrong idea of what really happened. Um, everything is not, and this is a, this a help, this is a help calm people down a little bit too with all the conspiracy stuff, you know what I mean? Everything is not a conspiracy. Some things happen because you did something wrong and there's no big conspiracy behind it, you know what I mean? I did something wrong that day, you know what I mean? The, the street, the, the life where I come from, you know, it's dangerous, man. The environment, where I come from is dangerous. And I'm out there, I'm not out there um, running around trying to hurt people. I'm not doing nothing. But, but you have a right to have a gun. I think that law's wrong. Yeah, but you know what? The gun was illegal that I had. You know what I mean? I have a right to have a gun if, as long as I follow the steps and, and follow the law and get it the right way. You know what I mean? The gun I was carrying was illegal. 
it was a legal firearm. I wasn't supposed to have it. I wasn't licensed to carry it, none of that. Nah, but you know see, I mean? but, but there's only a few spots, Prodigy, where that's the case, and a law that's unconstitutional is null and void. I don't want to... I, look, I would use this example if you weren't here because it's it's a good one. It's true. You know the first gun laws were against black people in this country. After the Civil War, they said we can't have those folks being armed, so it started. And it, there's only a few cities, Chicago, New York, and others, where it's almost impossible to own a gun. For me, it, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is crazy to, to especially be a famous person with all the, I bet the stalkers and stuff you've got, and to not have a gun. I mean, listen, I got a gun right here with me right now. And it's not because I'm living in fear, I'm living in strength. I mean, I, I gotta tell you, you were falsely in prison, and I know it's a way to you know, man up and say, well, I did wrong. I'm not gonna say it's, you know, that I was put in prison, but, uh, and, and I don't wanna end the interview on that, but I mean, shouldn't you work to get rid of New York gun laws so everybody can defend themselves? I mean, yeah, that would be a beautiful thing, man. It would definitely be a beautiful thing um, to do that, you know what I mean? Yes, I, I think it's pure bull. I mean, I, I understand, you know, it's like good sportsmanship. Okay, I went to jail. I'm not going to say I was innocent. But, I mean, well, okay, I'll use this one on you. There have been a lot of laws in this country that were unconstitutional, haven't there been? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right about that. I can think of a couple right now. I bet you can think of some. You're definitely right about that. You know what I mean? But, you know, I, I just wanted to let people know it, it wasn't like... It wasn't like, oh, they came after me because uh, he's talking this stuff in his songs. That's not what happened. You know what I'm saying? No, <laughs> I hear you. But, but, but if you were playing along, then it might have gotten dropped. And I know that stuff goes on. Yeah. You never know with that. You know what I mean? That, it was definitely, I'll tell you this much. During my trial, the, 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 the arresting detectives came on the stand and they actually lied. Like, cold lied in my trial. See? You know what I mean? It was a, like a big lie to make sure that I got locked up. Because it was an illegal search. It was an illegal search of my car. So they got on the stand in the trial, and they said, oh, we saw the gun in his hand when he walked up on the car, and that wasn't true. Okay. They had to say that. You know Bearing I mean? false witness state. in court? I mean, yes. that, that that's as bad. That See? That, that, look. Look, the government's been caught everywhere. In closing, I'm sure you've heard about the government now admitting they're bringing the opium in. Can you believe that? They just admit it? Yeah, it's crazy. It's well, crazy, listen, man. Prodigy, this has been absolutely incredible, and I really respect the work you're doing, and I'm glad you're getting a good message out uh, to people. And I tell you, I know you love New York, but you ought to move somewhere uh, where, where there's the Second Amendment because you have a right to defend yourself. And I look forward to, what, having you back up in a month or so and uh, play some clips of your audio book. Definitely, man. I look forward to coming back, too, man. You know what I mean? I appreciate you having me up here. You know what I mean? I want everybody to follow me on Twitter, at Prodigy Mob D. Absolutely. Give it out one more time. At Prodigy Mob D. Follow and, me on Twitter. And then, of course, there's the uh, main website to get the new book. Fire that out at us, Prodigy. Yeah, the main website is themostinfamous.com. And folks, follow me at The Real Alex Jones at Twitter and Infowars.com. Prodigy, let me say bye to you during the break.